Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called the Pythagorean quadruple. And you can tell by the name, the Pythagorean, that it's based off of something called the Pythagorean theorem, right? Which we know works with right triangles, right? And, and what do we know about right triangles? Well, actually, before we get there, the Pythagorean quadruple actually works with solid three-dimensional figures, but it also is based on the diagonal, and it's an extension, if you want, of the Pythagorean theorem. So it probably makes some sense for us to look at the Pythagorean theorem real quickly, okay? Now, what does the Pythagorean theorem say? Well, that we know that for a right triangle, and remember that a right triangle needs to have a 90-degree angle in it, that the two sides, the sum of the two sides, so a squared plus b squared, will be equal to the diagonal c squared, okay? So let me just write that up here again. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay? Now, how does that pertain to the Pythagorean quadruple? Well, the Pythagorean, let me just give it to you first uh, and, and see what it is. The Pythagorean quadruple basically says you can find in a three-dimensional object, that's more like a cube or a rectangular or a prism of some kind, right? That if you go from one vertex to its direct opposite, okay, that's the D, that will be equal to this side squared plus this side squared, again similar to this, but then also to the Z axis squared. So going inside, that would be C squared, and that will be equal to the diagonal squared. Let me write that up here. A squared plus b squared plus c squared will be equal to the diagonal squared, okay? And that's what's called the Pythagorean quadruple. Now let's just see how that's actually constructed. This, is, this gets a little tricky, and I'd like to use your imagination just a little bit. So you can see in this three-dimensional figure that if I were to go across here, just along the very, very flat base of the cube, right, and I were to create another diagonal right there, I would have basically a right triangle, wouldn't I? So this would be the A squared, this diagonal would be the B squared, and then this diagonal would be the C squared. So let's break that out a little bit. If I were to just draw the very, very flat base of this cube, right, it would look something like this, right? Let's assume that it's a cube, right? So there, it goes from there to there to there to there to there, right? That diagonal, this red dotted line would be that. You can see how it's just simply the Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, if I were to take that diagonal, and this goes straight up, let me just flatten it out a little bit, and go straight up, right, and then create that diagonal, this would be another further, it would be like a second time using the Pythagorean theorem again, right? So again, this would be the A squared, this would be like the B squared, and this would be like the C squared, okay? And then this C, right, becomes like the new A. We'll call it C1. This is like the new A squared, and then this is my, like my new diagonal squared, okay? Let's just put some numbers in here and see how it would work. Let's assume that this is a perfect square. Okay. Well, actually, let's assume this is a perfect square. We know that this is 4. Let's say A is 4. Let's say B is 4. And it's going to be equal to C squared. That gives me 16 plus 16 is 32. Take the square root. And that would just be equal to 4 radical 2. And if you remember, that's actually the ratio, right? That's the ratio over here. It would be like um, x. This would be x because it's the same x. This would be whatever the x is, radical 
two. That's how I usually remember, like, you know, 30, uh, 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. All right. 45, 45, 90, since these are the same length. Now down here, let's just put in our numbers. We know that each of the A, B, and the C are all perfect squares, so it would be 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to D squared. That would be 32 plus 16 would be 48 is equal to D squared. Take the square root of both sides. Let's move over here. You get the square root. Actually, you know what? Let me let me put my little numbers in here because it helps me keep track nice and easily. That's step five. This would be like step one, two, three, step four. That would be equal to D. Um, 16, uh, it needs to be square root to be 16. 16 times 16 and be uh, 4 times 4 rather be 16. This would be 16 radical 2. Is that right? Oop, hold on for just one second. I'm going to have to do a radical tree. 18, that would be 3 times 16. That would be 4 times 4. So that would be 2 times 2. Okay. So it would be 3 times radical 16 times radical 3. And that would end up being 4 radical 3. So 4, 4, 4. And that would be 4 radical 3. All right. Let me just say that again. 4 four, four, and the diagonal would end up being four radical three. Okay, just like this would be four, four, four radical two, this would be four, 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 four radical three. Okay, just some really interesting relationships, okay? I hope that was helpful, I hope that wasn't too confusing, and um, let's just try it with a problem.